It really helps us if you'd like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for considering that. All right, so are you ready to dive into this? Trump's new cabinet, it's, uh, well, it's causing quite a stir. Yeah, no kidding. We've been poring over these early lists, digging into the backgrounds of some really standout figures. Like, have you heard about Caroline Levitt? Oh, yeah. She's, uh, she's definitely an interesting choice. And then there's all this talk about potential recess appointments. We'll get into that. But first, let's set the stage here. Right, because we got to remember, this is Trump 2.0. He's back, and he's not afraid to shake things up. Exactly. This cabinet, this isn't business as usual. We're seeing surprises that are making people rethink what a Trump presidency even looks like. It's definitely got everyone talking, that's for sure. So let's jump right in. We've got to talk about some of these big names. First off, Matt Gates as attorney general. I mean, the guy's a firebrand, even within his own party. He's not afraid to ruffle feathers, that's for sure. So what does that tell us about how Trump's approaching justice in this second term? I think it signals a willingness to really challenge the status quo, to maybe even take on some of those entrenched interests that haven't always been happy with Gates. Yeah. And then you've got Tulsi Gabbard heading national intelligence, a former Democrat, military veteran, and now a vocal Trump supporter. Yeah. It's a pretty wild trajectory. It is. But it also speaks to Trump's ability to pull from different sides of the aisle. Absolutely. And it's not just Gabbard. Look at RFK Jr. at Health and yeah. Human Services a well-known environmental activist, and let's be honest, a bit of a lightning rod when it comes to vaccines. Yeah, he definitely sparked a lot of debate, but you can't deny his passion for those issues. So what do you make of these picks? I mean, they're definitely not your typical GOP establishment figures. No, not at all. I think what's fascinating here is that Trump seems to be prioritizing loyalty and shared goals over just ticking boxes on a traditional Republican checklist. It's like he's assembling a team of power players, yeah. each with their own unique strengths, who are ready to shake things up and challenge those norms in Washington. It certainly seems that way. It'll be interesting to see how these personalities mesh and what impact they have on policy decisions. Definitely. And for our listeners out there, we want to hear from you. Which of these picks stands out to you the most? And what questions does it raise about where Trump might be taking things in this second term? Yeah, jump into the comments. Let's get a conversation going. This is just the tip of the iceberg, folks. And it's not just the big names like Gates and Gabbard, right? Look at who Trump's tapped for some of those key security positions. Doug Burgum at Interior, Christine Noem for Homeland Security. Two governors, both Republicans, but not exactly household names, are they? Not in the same way as some of those D.C. insiders, maybe, but that might be exactly the point. So what do their records tell us about what they might prioritize? Well, both Burgum and Noam, they've got this track record of getting things done, you know? Huh. Real, practical experience governing. They understand the challenges facing everyday people. It's almost like Trump saying, I want doers, not just talkers. Yeah, maybe. And then you've got... Okay, this is where it gets really interesting. Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy to head up a brand new department, no less the Department of Government Efficiency. Whoa, hold on. Elon Musk. Like Tesla and SpaceX Musk. That's the one. And Ramaswamy, he's no slouch either. Successful entrepreneur, outspoken advocate for free markets. So you've got a tech mogul and a business leader tasked with, what, streamlining the federal government? That's a pretty tall order. It is, but if anyone can shake things up, it might be these two. I mean, think about it. They've both built their careers on disrupting industries, finding creative solutions to complex problems. Yeah, I guess that's true. But how do they even begin to tackle something as massive and entrenched as the federal bureaucracy? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? It's a huge gamble for Trump, but it's also a signal that he's serious about changing how the government operates. He wants to make it more efficient, more responsive to the people. And he's clearly willing to think outside the box to do it. Absolutely. Now, speaking of thinking outside the box, we got to talk about Caroline Leavitt, Trump's pick for press secretary. The youngest person ever to hold that position, right? 27 years old. Already a seasoned political operative, though. Worked for Trump before, even ran for Congress herself. Wow. That's a lot of experience for someone so young. She's a rising star, that's for sure. And her appointment? It's a clear sign that Trump is looking to shake up the way the White House communicates. So what can we expect from Leave It? Will she adopt that, you know, that more combative style we've seen from some of the previous press secretaries? That's the big question, isn't it? She's definitely got the potential to be a powerful voice for the administration. It's going to be interesting to see how she handles that role, that's for sure. Hmm. Now, let's talk about something that could really shake things up in Washington. 
Trump's demand to use recess appointments for some of his cabinet picks. Yeah, this is a power play that's causing a lot of controversy. I'll be honest, I don't really understand what a recess appointment even is. So basically, when the Senate is on a break, a recess, the president can temporarily fill certain government positions without waiting for the Senate's approval. Ah, so it's like a loophole. Kind of. It's a power that's granted by the Constitution, but it's traditionally been used sparingly, you know, for less controversial roles. And Trump wants to use it for some of his more contentious picks. Exactly. And that's why everyone's freaking out. It's like he's trying to sidestep Congress and install his people without any oversight. So what are the potential consequences here? What if he actually goes through with this? Well, we could see a major backlash from Congress, potentially even legal challenges. Yeah. And it could set a dangerous precedent for future presidents. It sounds like this could really upset the balance of power in Washington. It could. But, you know, Trump has never been one to shy away from a fight. No, he hasn't. It's it's wild, right? I mean, this cabinet, it's like a who's who of, well, of people who aren't afraid to challenge the way things are done. And that's exactly what makes this so fascinating, I think. It's like Trump has tapped into this this real desire for change, not just within his base, but, you know, maybe even among some folks who wouldn't typically vote for him. It's it's a gamble, though, right? I mean, bringing together all these strong personalities, different backgrounds, some might even say conflicting ideologies. But it could also lead to something truly remarkable. So as we wrap this up, I guess the big question is, can it work? Right. Can this administration actually govern? Can they find common ground, make progress on those big issues facing the country? Or are we just going to see more gridlock? Only time will tell, I guess. But man, what a ride it's going to be. No doubt about it. And we'll be here every step of the way, breaking it all down for you. That's right. So stay tuned, folks. We'll be back with more deep dives, helping you make sense of this crazy world. And in the meantime, keep those questions coming. Please subscribe to get easier access to a Stormy podcast. There's a lot happening in the world. Let's explore it together.